Do you want to learn what Korean seasonings to buy? Well, you came to the right place today. Today we will go over the very basic must-have Korean seasonings to make delicious Korean food at home. And by the end of this tutorial, you will know exactly what seasonings to buy and how to use them. Yep, shopping confidence when it comes to Korean seasonings. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. And welcome to my blog series where we discuss everything related to Korean food and much more. Now, for those of you that are new to Modern Pepper, Modern Pepper is a Korean cooking channel that offers instructional Korean cooking lessons for authentic Korean recipes as well as Korean fusion recipes. So please do consider subscribing. 맛있는 한식 요리와 한식 퓨전 요리를 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. 구독 버튼 꼭 눌러주세요. So today we are going to go over the very basic must-have Korean seasonings that you need if you're making Korean food at home. Part one is Korean paste including gochujang, doenjang, and samjang. Part two is Korean soy sauce called ganjang and the different varieties that are available. Part three is Korean red pepper flakes and its varieties. Part four is the seasonings that you need to make Korean broth. Part five is the different kinds of Korean cooking wines. Part six is your very favorite sesame oil called chamgidum. Part seven, vinegars called shikcho in Korean. And part eight, we'll go over the different kinds of sweeteners that are commonly used in Korean cooking. And last but not least, different kinds of salt that are commonly also used in Korean cooking as well. So if you're interested in skipping through the different parts, just follow the time codes that you see right here. So here we have gochujang. Gochujang is fermented red pepper flakes. This is one of the most important ingredients in Korean cooking. Gochujang is used for so many things. You could eat it straight out of the box, you could also use it to make seasoning sauces. Think of it as like salad dressing, kinda, but we would use it to make all different kinds of muchim, whether it's for vegetables or with seafood. We would also use it for spicy barbecue, marinades, and you could also use it to make yang yum jang, seasoning sauce to cook with. And you could also use this for braising fish. I mean, it is endless in terms of what you can do with gochujang, but it really adds that thickening agent with so much depth and flavor. I could go on and on and on, and I'm getting hungry thinking about all the glorious meals that you can make using gochujang. Now, my great-grandmother, my no money, literally in the afternoon, pour herself a little shot of soju and dip dried anchovies in gochujang and eat it she knew what she was doing. That is a great combination, so you guys should try that. Now, with gochujang, I also use it to make Korean fusion dishes. So I add a little bit of creme fraiche to make grilled cheese sandwiches. Yep, spicy grilled cheese sandwiches with gochujang. Folks, try it, so good. And I also use it to make sort of like a spicy creamy sauce and I top it on my omelet rice that you see right here. Mucho, mucho bueno, so good. On to our next item is called doenjang. Doenjang is fermented soybean paste. These two, it's a must. Like you can't just have one or the other when it comes to Korean cooking. So doenjang is used to make so many dishes too. I mean, one famous one is doenjang jjigae. It's not as popular as kimchi jjigae globally, but in Korea, doenjang jjigae is like neck to neck with kimchi jjigae. Like they're both so equally popular. It is a comfort stew. In doenjang, we also use it to make a lighter version of doenjang jjigae, doenjang guk. Doenjang guk is your lighter, more watery, milder taste. In typical, traditional Korean meal, there's always some sort of soup or broth when you have it with rice. And doenjang guk is one of those super popular side broth soup. I also use doenjang to my marinades, to my bulgogi marinades, kalbi marinades, spicy pork marinades, and also to my you know, seafood or fish stews. Doenjang has this quality of 
masking the smell and taste of gaminess. And it is also a great salt flavoring agent. Again, I'm getting hungry thinking about all the dishes that you can make using doenjang. So this is a must. Now, this is the third one. This is the trifecta color that you see. This green container is called samjang. Sam meaning we take lettuce and we wrap it up. We add rice, we add grilled fish, grilled meat. And this is the condiment sauce that we add to our lettuce wrap called sam. So sam means lettuce wrap, chang means sauce. Now this is not a must because this is basically a combination of gochujang and doenjang mixed together with a few additional ingredients. And this one, you know, you get it out of convenience. Um, certainly this one has a lot of additional flavors. Most of them has flavor enhancers to make it extra tasty. But I have a recipe for making this using gochujang and doenjang. So check it out. But I want to also make a full disclosure here. No one is sponsoring me. No one's paying me. No one's giving me any business deals to promote any brands or whatsoever. I mean, although one day I have a dream that I might be sponsored and make some money doing this, but I just want to make a full disclosure. This is my personal opinion. Uh, the brand that I like is CJ and the one that I get is called Cherechik. And basically that means rustic so that you know when you go through the paste you'll see some lumps of soybeans now for gochujang what i like to buy is made with 100 percent brown rice so brown rice is hyunmi sal and usually gochujang is made with sweet white rice called chap sal all these brands are great because in korea this is such a huge business that if they could sustain and keep their brand making doenjang and gochujang, that's because they know what they're doing. Because, and it, you know, they want to sort of cater to the wider audience outside of the Korean population. They also came up with the mild version and also super spicy version. Gochujang in general is not meant to be super spicy like some of the spicy tastes that we get from like Thai food or from uh, Mexican food where like you feel like your face is just lit on fire. <laughs> or you just stepped into a hot beacon class. In general, gochujang is not meant to be that spicy. I mean, on the scale, gochujang will probably be barely mid-level spiciness. And I never tried the mild version. Most Koreans just buy the regular. Now, if you want to make it less spicy, what I recommend is adding a little bit of water, thin it out, and then add a little bit of honey, or if you want to use white sugar, you can. And that's how you could kind of make it a little bit less spicier tasting. For those that want to make it super spicy, instead of buying the spicy one, I would just buy the regular and add cayenne pepper or add the Korean red pepper flakes called Cheongyang Gochukgaru, which is the spicy version of red pepper flakes, or just throw in some freshly cut jalapeno peppers, mix it all up, and that'll just make it super spicy too. So my recommendation is stick with the one that's mass produced, that is just well refined, and that is just the way it's supposed to taste. I know, I know, I hear you. Some of you are asking, well, is this something that you could just whip up together? No, no, and no. <laughs> Tenjang and gochujang is not something that you whip up together. I've seen something where um, one of the American food TV hosts said that gochujang is basically the ketchup of Korea. What do I think about that comment? <laughs> mm, zip, I won't say anything, but it is not a simple condiment such as ketchup, although I love ketchup. Gochujang and doenjang is an art form when it comes to making it. My grandmother's generation and the generations before that, they didn't have the option to go to a supermarket and buy really, really high quality, well-made doenjang and gochujang. So back then, everyone had to make their own. These guys, not only it requires a lot of love and labor and ingredients, but it requires time and TLC. So these guys are stored in large clay pots called hangari, or the proper word is ongi. It's earthenware clay pot. It goes in there and it needs to ferment for at least one year. Yes, one year. My grandmother would say, she would say that it tastes better when it's at year two. 
And for Tianjiang, it's another level of more prep and labor intensive and time consuming work because this, you cook the soybeans, you have to mold it in this block shape, you have to hang it. I remember growing up where my grandmother would hang blocks of meju, it's called meju, these blocks of soybean that she shaped into this like square shape. It would literally hang in the ceiling. It needs to be air dried super slow at this control temperature. It also needs the right amount of sun exposure. So sometimes she would open the door, let the breeze come in. Sometimes she would bring it out depending on the weather. And it has to be that well looked after so that all the healthy bacteria grows around it. Then it goes through another process where it's cooked again, and then it goes into the clay pot where it is fermenting there for at least a year, two years better. Now, once it is in the clay pot, it needs to be in the right part of your courtyard. At my grandmother's house, she had a special area where it was only for all her clay pots, and that was typically the case. I know there's a lot of friends that buy Korean um, clay pots and they kind of put it next to the bushes and stuff. That really isn't ideal because you want the clay pots to be away from any insects or try to minimize that. And then the amount of love that my grandmother put into taking care of it, you have to polish it, wash the exterior so it absorbs enough water. I mean, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. My mom and my aunt, for fun, they would make a small batch of gochujang and tenjang for fun, you know, but they know that it really lacks the depth of flavor and taste because they just physically don't have time to tend to the clay pots for two years and such. I mean, no one really has the time. And for my vegan friends, for tenjang, some of them include a little bit of beef broth and some of them don't. So just make sure to check the ingredient label on the back. Now, as far as storage, these guys stay in the refrigerator for me. That's where I keep it and that's where I use it. And these guys come in various sizes and my mom always is buying the biggest one you can buy because it is the most economical, but I usually stick with the medium size. Okay, so I'm gonna include two more items. These are not your true authentic Korean uh, seasoning paste, but I wanna introduce it to everyone because it's uber popular. So this is bukum jajang. This is basically fermented black bean sauce that is used to make jajangmyeon, or it's the real proper proper name is jajangmyeon, and it's so good. The origin is Chinese. So the Chinese immigrants that came to Korea to live created all these delicious dishes that is very Chinese, but made specifically for the Korean population. And we call that Chunghua Yori. And jajangmyeon in Korea is like ordering pizza here in the States. I mean, it is your everyday quick and fast comfort food. And I know many ask if you could use the Chinese version of this. I haven't seen any Chinese versions that taste exactly the way this is supposed to taste. So my recommendation is for when it comes to bokum jajang, you have to buy the Korean brand. Now the other is kare rice. It's curry rice, but we call it kare rice. And this origin is obviously not authentically Korean, but Japanese curry rice and Korean curry rice is exactly the same. We use almost the same ingredients and there's Korean brands. For me, growing up in the States, the brand that I grew up having is this Japanese brand. It comes in mild, medium, spicy, and super spicy. Again, another quick dish that you can make at home that is enjoyed by so many Koreans. Now, all the ingredients that we're discussing today, I will have the product links in the description box below, so check it out. So you could use it as a reference next time you go to a Korean market. Or if you don't live near a Korean market, you could order them online. And all the recipes that I'm showcasing here are also available in the description box below. In Korean, soy sauce is called ganjang. And just like our tenjang and gochujang, ganjang also requires a great deal of TLC and a long time fermenting in the clay pot. So for those who are saying, can you just whip up soy sauce at home? My answer would be no, no, no. <laughs> When it comes to Korean soy sauce, there's a lot of varieties. So I'm gonna just narrow it down to the must have. This is what I always have. This is your all purpose soy sauce. Now it's not Korean, but I mean, the reason why I use this is because I am uh, a bargain hunter. <laughs> 
I love doing shopping math. So I buy the big gallon one and I use it all the time. And I put it in this little snap pouring container and I keep it in here for daily use. Just to simplify everything, Jinganjang is your stronger brew, okay? And you could use this for marinades, you could also use it for um, braising, and there's also another soy sauce that's specific for braising called Jorim Ganjang. And basically both of them are stronger brew and darker in color. Now, the other popular one is called Kuk Ganjang. Kuk meaning broth or soup. And basically you use this to add to your broth, to add the salty taste and a subtle background of that soy sauce taste. So as you can see, the colors vary. Chinganjang is the darkest, all purpose is sort of in between, and Kukanjang is your lightest. Now, if you're asking, do I have to get all three of these? Mm, my answer would be no, not necessarily. If you have really good all purpose soy sauce, I think you're golden because Soy sauce is not like a condiment where you just pour out and you dip and then it's like delicious. No, actually when you have it straight up, it's salty, you know? We use soy sauce and we add other ingredients. We dilute it with some water, um, some vinegar and additional spices, depending on what you're making the dipping sauce for. Then it tastes golden, super delicious. I have loads of recipes on making different kinds of dipping sauces using soy sauce, so check them out. They're in the description box below. And also there's a lot of soy sauces that has additional flavor enhancers, so those are tastier because of that. Now, if you're fastidious about the ingredients, make sure to check the back label. Some of them contain high fructose corn syrup, and no judgments here. I say pick the soy sauce or whatever you're using that makes you happy. Okay, so this is Korean red pepper flakes. We call it gochukaru. And this is the coarse grind that you use for uh, seasonings, to marinate, to make kimchi. And this one is made in Korea, 100% farmed and processed in Korea. I don't really like to equate quality with the prices, but when it comes to Korean gochukaru, quality is correlated with how much it costs. 100% made in Korea, we call that hanguksan, is very expensive. Compared to gochukaru that's manufactured and outsourced in other countries. So if you're using gochukaru that's processed and manufactured outside of Korea, I would try to buy the one that's most expensive within that category. So I want to share a tip with you. You're not going to go through this whole bag quickly. So I double bag it and I put it in the freezer. And for small portions that I would use to make other dishes. I put it in a small container and I keep that in the refrigerator. Now there's the other Korean red pepper flakes that is fine powder. We call that gon gochukaru. That is used for dishes, you know, to enhance flavors, to make it spicy. It is not used to make kimchi. And speaking of which, I also have a video called Kimchi 101 that includes everything you need to know. So check it out. Now for my vegan friends, I have a vegan kimchi recipe that includes how to make vegan fish sauce. Obviously, it's not real fish in there. And vegan salt fermented quote unquote shrimp that you could also use to make kimchi and also use it to enhance the flavor of your soups and stews. So check it out. Now, as mentioned earlier, Cheongyang gochukaru is your spicier pepper flakes compared to your normal pepper flakes that we use. Okay, now on to the items that we need for making Korean broth. So there's of course many different kinds of broth, but we're gonna break it down into meorchi, seafood broth, and for beef or pork. So to make our seafood broth, we use meorchi. Meorchi is anchovies and we use dried ones. The big ones are the ones that you wanna use for broth making. The small ones are for making side dishes. So they come in sort of this like small half an inch or even smaller to like tiny, tiny baby ones. So any dried anchovy that's, in my opinion, an inch and a half or shorter are made for making side dishes with panchan. We stir fry it with onions and stuff, it's so good. Anything bigger than that, it's to make the broth, merchi anchovy broth. 
these guys are extremely expensive if it gets bigger. So the bigger they are, it has more flavors and those are hard to get by. Those you can't really even get at supermarkets, like you have to go to a specialty store. But you can find these guys at the store that's about two inches long. Those are ideal. And you just wanna make sure you open the cavity and pull out the dried up intestine part. The head stays on, the bone stays on. Those are gonna add the flavor to your broth. So do not take off the head or the bones, that's a must. Now, for my vegan friends, you could skip the anchovies and just go straight to adding sea kelp. We call this tashima. So we add the anchovies and tashima with some few other vegetables to make this really light and mild seafood broth base. And you know, you could also add a little bit of shiitake mushrooms. It's an option, it's not a requirement. Now, Korea is all about making things super easy for everyone that has to cook. You could buy these gungmul yong pack. It's basically, it comes in a tea bag like this. It has the anchovies, it has the sea kelp. Some of them have dried onions and garlic and dried shrimp. It depends on what you pick. So this goes in the broth, you cook it for a little bit and you pull out. A tip I wanna share with you is when you blanch your dried anchovies, I make sure that the water is piping, piping hot and I only blanch it for like five minutes at max with the lid on. That is to extract the essence and the taste of the anchovies. If you cook it for a long time, you'll notice that the smell of the anchovies turn funky and it doesn't smell or taste clean. So that's my tip. Flash, boil for five minutes with the lid on and then take it out and then add the tashima and other ingredients to enhance the flavor. So I will have a video for that coming up shortly. So make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified. <laughs> now, this part, many people don't wanna discuss. So in Korean cooking, I'm not saying everyone does it, but it is very, very likely that most households will have mochi dashida. This is the dried anchovy tashida and togogi dashida. This is beef dashida. These are both bouillon powders, flavor enhancers. Many will be like, oh no, we don't. But then the chef will kick out everyone from the kitchen and then lock the door and then go add his special <laughs> seasoning, which typically is MSG. No, I'm not saying that all restaurants do that. But what I'm saying is chances are if you're eating out, there's probably some sort of flavor enhancer such as tashda or MSG or other kinds. Anchovy, I would use this for anything related to like seafood broth base. It just takes it to another level. Like it just heightens all the flavors. And then for the beef tashda, I use it for any dishes where I'm cooking with beef, pork, or chicken. Now, if you go to a big Korean supermarket, you're gonna see so many varieties. You're gonna see the tashida for clams. I've seen one with chicken. So pick the one that you wanna use. So if you watch my videos, I always say you could add this. It's an option, it's not a requirement. But if you wanna mimic the taste of how it tastes at restaurants, these two guys will take you there. This is called Yeongdu. It's a concentrated flavor enhancer for your broth, soups, and stews. This green one is vegan friendly, the orange one is the original, and the red one is for spicy soups, stews, and broth. Now this is a concentrated version, so make sure to use it sparingly. Now on to cooking wine. There's a few varieties. There's midim, there's mihang, and there's matsul. Basically, they're all the same, except that there's a slight difference in the alcohol level content. I use medium. This is the Korean version, and this is the Japanese version. Now, what do you use cooking wine for? To enhance the flavor of broths and stews, and I also use it to make marinades when I make bulgogi, kalbi, deji bulgogi, like for fish, beef, chicken, I use it all. Some of them, are a little bit sweeter than the other, so find the one that you like. I prefer the ones that are less sweet. Now, onto sesame oil. So in Korean cooking, sesame oil called chamgirim 
is a must. It's sort of like what butter is to French cooking. It's like, it's a must. Now, sesame oil has a really low threshold for heat. So this is not something that you want to use to fry with or to put on really hot frying pans. Sesame oil is really ideal to use as a dressing. So I drizzle this on so many things. It's just fragrant, it's buttery. I mean, you could just add a little bit of sesame oil to warm Korean rice and a little bit of soy sauce and call it a day. I mean, if you start adding more stuff to it, then it just becomes your wonderful, delicious bibimbap at home. And also you could use sesame oil and some coarse salt and freshly ground black pepper to make this delicious dipping sauce with Korean barbecue that's not marinated. Yes, you'll see that video. So, so yummy. So sesame oil, you must get this. Now, sesame seeds. These are called gesogum. This one is roasted with salt so it tastes better. And you could also buy the ones without salt. Now, I wanna share a tip with you. When it comes to sesame seeds, less is more. I've seen so many recipes out there where they put so much of this on everything and it's just like, no. no. Sesame seeds are for garnishing. It's supposed to be a subtle taste in your mouth that you just kind of get a surprise bite of sesame seed in your mouth with whatever you're eating. It is not supposed to be a strong flavor or ingredient to whatever you're making. So less is more when it comes to sesame seeds. Now, vinegar. So vinegar, there's your everyday normal use vinegar to these like super old aged vinegar that's used more for sort of really gourmet dishes. For everyday use, my favorite one is Hyunmi Shikcho, that is brown rice vinegar. It's mild, clean aftertaste. Uh, Koreans also use apple vinegar, and then there's this whole series of flavor vinegars with fruit and such, and you add water to it and you drink it. Because Koreans, uh, we tend to focus on whatever is really good for your health, we're like all over it. So supposedly, having vinegar every day is really, really healthy for you. Why? I don't know, but you could Google and find out. The other Korean vinegar, it's called wangcho, which is extra, extra vinegary. That is used to make dipping sauce with gochujang, typically for Korean raw fish. We call that hae, and you dip it, and it's just like straight up your nose, super vinegary taste. It's just so good too. Now, when it comes to sweeteners, of course you could use white sugar. Personally for me, I prefer to use honey and brown sugar, hook sultang. You could also use oligodang. Oligodang is made with rice and sometimes corn. You could use mulyat, which is basically corn syrup. It comes clear, it also comes brown, and the brown one, it has malt barley in it. And basically these are syrupy liquids that you use as your sweetener for whatever you make. You know, it creates this really nice glossy finish to your food. So you could add it to your stews or depending on what you're making. For me, in addition to honey, that's my go-to. The other sweetener that I would use is Meshu Chang. And this is basically plum extract syrup. I mean, you could also use this to make hot tea. I mean, it's really delicious. I add this to my kimchi when I make it instead of white sugar. In general, Korean food is really not meant to be super sweet like some other Asian dishes that are really well known for its sweet taste and we love that. But for Korean food, it's really not meant to be too sweet. Although I see so many restaurants here in the States and also these packaged foods that are selling to non-Koreans, they tend to make them so sweet. Maybe they think that non-Koreans would like it because it's sweeter. For me, I say no. I think people should eat Korean food the way it's supposed to taste, not that sweet. Like for instance, bulgogi, the sweetness is supposed to be such a slight aftertaste, not like, oh, sweet, like teriyaki. That's just my opinion. Now onto salt. This is gulgun sogum, basically means coarse salt. It is used to brine cabbage or other vegetables that we use to make kimchi. You could also use it to ferment a variety of things. Those are like super advanced cuisines like for fish and such. Now there's also this bamboo roasted salt that's for seasoning your dishes when you're making them. It's called jugyeom. That's a good one to have in your cupboard, but it's you know not necessary. It's supposed to be like the healthy salt because it was roasted in bamboo. I use kosher salt. That's my go-to for everyday use. 
This concludes today's vlog for your must-have essential Korean seasonings. One final tip that I want to share is if you can, if you can, you know, if your budget allows, there's so many reasons why, but we Koreans, if we can afford it, we will buy 100% Korean-made products, especially when it comes to food. There's a lot of value if you buy products that have been outsourced and um, farmed outside of Korea. Um, and those are tasty too. So, you know, you just gotta follow what your budget allows. But if your budget allows, buy Korean products, if I didn't make that clear already. <laughs> Now, make sure to subscribe because I will be doing a couple more videos on your basic Korean ingredients for, you know, rice grains, for noodles, there's so many different kinds, to dried vegetables and dried kit packets that you could bring home to make delicious meals. And also another video just on perishable Korean groceries, must-haves and also of course my favorite korean snacks we call that paja in korean oh boy oh boy do i have a long list of all of my favorite korean snacks that are og that are like old school not the new ones new ones are okay they're good you know they're but they're for my kids <laughs> but for moi Mm, I can't wait to share those. So if you have not subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe, click on that notification bell, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would click on that like button. Thank you very much. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼 눌러주세요. 감사합니다.